Let's talk about Labor of Death, a documentary put together by my colleague Pa Kwesi Asari here. When we come back, we'll have a conversation with two gentlemen who are upbeat about this. Hammers strike iron. The clinging sounds of ferrous rubble tingle the ear. The noise is deafening. Clusters of thick, dark smoke emanating from the burning of waste electronic products and other scrap material fill the atmosphere, blaring vision and causing teary eyes. Agbogbloshi, a slum in the center of Accra, Ghana, has achieved notoriety as one of the most polluted slums in the world. The Blacksmith Institute, renamed Pure Earth in 2015, rated the Bubulushi Iwe site as among the top 10 most toxic sites in the world. Early settlers arrived in this area in 1981. It has since attracted economic migrants from various parts of the country, typically northern Ghana, who seek employment. Another of Old Fadama's pool factors is its low cost of living. The neighborhood has some of the cheapest rents in the city. Despite having little to do with the generation of e-waste, these low-income inhabitants live the closest to the city's e-waste hub due to the ecological distribution of a cross general waste management system. Both young and old are engaged in one task or the other in the chain of activities associated with the scrap metal business. From morning to evening, they search through what has notoriously been named as the world's biggest dump site for electronic waste materials, looking for worn-out computers, television sets, and other electronic waste to extract copper and other valuable materials. It is what they do for a living, but first, it feeds them, then kills them slowly. 22-year-old Abdallah has been working on this dump site for the last six years. He migrated from the northern part of Ghana to Accra in search of a better life. With a wife and three kids, this is the only sustainable way of feeding his family. This work is deeply dangerous because the work, how you are burning the copper, hit the inside. So when you burn fresh, after, if you go home, you take medicine before you sleep because you see pain with your body inside. His story is not entirely different from Abdul Hussein, who also comes from the north. Abdul is fully aware of the dangers he's exposed to, but says he has no other alternative job. Actually, I know say this one is dangerous, but this work, they are, we, if that one be our work, we can't do it, we can't change different work. But when we see some happy work can help us, then we protect that place where we they get work, when the smoke no good itself anymore, we like. What kind of help do you want? Uh, anyone. If I get anyone I like. Or if I want if I get different life, uh, different work where I will leave this one, I can feel good doing it. This scrap metal dump site is not only a business center for dealers in scrap metals, but also a home for many people. They live and work in this dangerous environment, oblivious of the hazardous conditions they are exposed to daily. The most affected group in this area is children who engage in all forms of work that frowns on the loss of the country. Among the dealers in this scrap metal business are children who should be in school but who sacrifice their future and put their lives on the line. One such child is 14-year-old Memuna who has been selling sachet water. The laws of Ghana do not permit Memuna to be selling water when she should be in school. No, I go to school. I don't. Memuna and her other female colleagues are exposed to all the ills of living in a community as dangerous as Sodom and Gomorrah, one of the most notorious towns in Accra. Although the laws of Ghana forbid Memuna from engaging in trade until she is of age, nobody seems to care. Child rights activist Bright Apia blames the situation on the failure of parents, society and the state. In every environment where there are no uh, guidelines, uh, children 
especially the, male, the female child, do so far more than anybody in that environment. Uh, the practice, the behavior, the conduct, how people do things, how people even relate with them in terms of the sexual activities and abuses and all that, they suffer the most. That's, uh, those were excerpts of our documentary here on assignment, Labor of Death, put together by my colleague Park Chrissy Asari. I've been joined in the studio by George Kojuanti. He is the Business Development Manager at the Ghana Standards Authority. And also, Ben Sinoso is a public health specialist. Gentlemen, welcome. Good morning. How are you doing? Hello. I'll start with you, uh, your initial thoughts about this. First, from the point of view of the Standards Authority. Kojo, what do you think? Um, Johnny, I, th I think this is a problem. It's a very serious problem. And it's a problem that we've all been pretending we do not know is, is happening. You know, there's elephants in the room and we're all pretending that we do, we do not know. This Aboloshi issue, I mean, it's something we've been grappling with for years now. Mm. It is not something that started last week or last two weeks, you know. So that, that we, we have to get it in this very gory nature mm. for it to hit us. For us to have a discussion over something that we've lived with for how many years now, mm. um, I think that it is very telling on us as a people. It's very telling on on the kind of society that we are we are you know we are building, mm. and we are we are leaving for generations to come because we have a responsibility mm -hmm. not only to those of us who are who are living currently, but to those who are yet to come. Right. If the, those who came before us destroyed. Mm. You know the um, the um, environment. We would not have come to meet any place called called Ghana. True. Uh, we should ask our, ourselves: What are we leaving behind mm. for those who are yet to come? You know, uh, it's it's disturbing. Benson, you are the health professional here. What dangers are they contending with uh, in 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 what they're doing? They're trying to make ends meet. The Daily Mail, I remember, named this place as the most toxic location on planet Earth. Tell us, what dangers are there? All right, Johnny, thank you very much. Let me start from the point view, uh, the epidemiology point of view, where, according to statistics given by the World Health Organization, uh, air pollution kills about 7 million people globally every year. Wow. And here in Ghana, uh, within Africa and Asia, about uh, 50 million tons of this e-waste product are smuggled into this continent mm. every year. Mm. Now, they are dealing with these heavy metals uh, in a quest to getting uh, their ends meet. Mm. They burn all this to extract this heavy metal. We can have um, lead, we can mm. have copper, right. we can have cadmium, we can have mercury, mm. among other heavy metals, mm. which research has proven that have adverse effects on our health. Mm. Now, they are being exposed to these fumes. Mm -hmm. We have what we call particulate matter. Mm -hmm. These particles are so minute that the cilia, okay, the hair mm -hmm. in our nose, are not able to sieve it. Okay. So it ends up going into our lungs and being absorbed into our bloodstream. Mm -hmm. Now, this can lead uh, in the long term lead the person to developing cancers, mm -hmm. okay, strokes, and other heart, heart diseases, respiratory diseases. Mm -hmm. I work at the Children Hospital for about more than five years. Okay. And the spate of um, these respiratory diseases mm -hmm. were always at the ascendancy. And as my brother asks, you ask yourself, why? Why? You see, we keep um, playing with everything in this country. Mm -hmm. Oh, we try politicizing every, everything. Mm -hmm. So if we end this, we try ending this, let's say political party A, Mm. or the government tries to end it political party b will use it against them that why are you trying to push the people but as you said we are we have to look into the future okay and could you i'll come to you also a lawyer uh, by profession uh, so the laws are there yeah. um we do know that this is an illegal site the ama has confirmed it your office has confirmed yeah. it yeah. why aren't we able to make the laws work in this regard Johnny, let me let me be very honest with with you, and I know a lot of people will not be happy with me for saying this. I'm I'm going to tell you two things. Part of the problem that we have is that we make laws, we are unwilling, unable to enforce those laws, and we try to solve the problem by making new laws. Really, that's one one that's, of the that's, that's one, one of the major problems we have in in this country. Okay, we have laws. We have laws for everything. But we don't make it work and we create new laws. Then we continue to compound. Then the other thing is, 
wherever there's a situation mm. that is so bad, everybody knows it is so bad, but the people who have the power to fix it are unwilling to fix it. Mm. Most of the time, those people are benefiting from the situation somehow. So the suggestion is that somebody in a higher place or somebody within the municipal assembly... If you were to do some assembly, undercover work mm. and go to the bottom of, of this, it will not be any different from this illegal mining, Galamsey and all those issues. Mm. It won't be different. There are some people who have the power to make the change, who are benefiting from this business that is going on. And that is why we are where, where we are. Is it a subject of your research? Or how did you come by this, Johnny, this situation, Johnny, this analogy? Uh, I have done this work for a while. Right. And I'll tell you something. Also at the GSA, in, in addition to the work that I do with business development, I'm also head of uh, enforcement there. So we go out locking the shops and all mm. of that, seizing the substandard products and all of that. Right. On a daily basis, the number of calls that I, I get Mm -hmm. and the places where those calls come from mm -hmm. and the requests that those people are making these are the same people who we have entrusted mm -hmm. leadership of our country into their hands they, they are telling you to back down on enforcing the law this is my brother oh this is my my son uh, you know that this one he's part of my he's a, he's a constituent of of mine so you let's just see how we can we can go around it johnny it's either we we want to do the right thing or we we don't for some of us who have been in this job for, for quite, quite a, a bit of time, it gets frustrating mm. when, to the public, we come out and act as though we want to fix a problem. Mm. And then behind the scenes, we come undermining the very institutions that have been, been given mandates to work. And that is a serious problem for us. Hmm. It's a very, very serious problem. And I know many people will not be happy with, with me for saying this. Let, let's look, Ben Siddhar, the ripple effect. I mean, these are guys who are in there in the thick of things, burning and earning. But the ripple effect of the community that lives around them, because the pollution is not just centered around that place. You tell me about it. What are the, the communities surrounding it? What dangers are they to face as well? Uh, thank you, uh, my brother. So you see, when this um, fumes go goes into the air mm. it doesn't just confine to where it's being bent because once air blows it it can go as far as the rich hospital to osu mm. and the rest mm. so then it's not just a matter of interest to just the people but mm. it should be a national issue right because um traces of these heavy metals have been have been tracked as far as osu mm. according to some studies that were done okay and as i said earlier even what's happening i won't take even the semen of people that live close mm. i mean the men right you can still trace this heavy metals in it yes and then also once it goes into the system say of a pregnant woman mm. it can have adverse effect on the unborn unborn child wow there will be reduction of oxygen flow to the child and at the end, it can lead the child to um, um, be, being born premature. Mm. Um, we have what we call low for age. Low, the, age, the weight will be lower than mm. expected. Mm. Mm. And mostly we think that, oh, the mother may not be eating right. Their location, their geographical location, okay. when you map all this, uh, the, the farthest point to these mm. fumes can go all have effect on, on, on that. And in our fight to fighting, um, ending uh, more we call the infant and maternal mortality mm, rate. Mm. So we fight this. It's achieve we achieving it is going to be very very difficult. Kojo, the, the, we have standards. For example, I think that Ghana has become a land of castaways and leftovers, yes. and we have the eco levy, which is supposed to be uh, a, a this a this uh, if you like uh, a this incentive for these kind of use computers and e waste to get in here. Why are we not enforcing it? How much are we charging now? And why do these things still find uh, their space in here? Okay, so um, with regards to the regulatory part, it is the EPA that handles that. So it's the EPA together with a private uh, company that is doing the collection of the eco levy. So I will not pretend to be an authority in that but, but area. But you manage or, the standard or to speak say. for them. Yes. Now, when it comes to us, what we we do is is that. Um, we are supposed to check the standard of every product that is coming into the country right. to make sure that it conforms to our national standard. In addition to that, if there are products that have been banned mm. from being imported into the country, we are also supposed to make sure that they don't come in. Mm. 
you know that is everything apart from food drugs cos cosmetics and those are those are those 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 uh, things that are regulated by the F fda mm. if you take those ones out we handle everything else at the ports mm. as we speak now there's an ally that bans used mattresses from coming in right and fridges but second hand here. fridges they are here anyway for commercial purposes if you are bringing it for domestic use yes but Johnny, you ask your, yourself, if you go to Kanishi First Light, around that area, okay, yeah. you go to uh, La Paz, there are certain places, you see these things being openly displayed. Mm, right. And you ask yourself, how did they come? Is it a problem of enforcement? I, I, think, I think first, it's a problem of the nature of borders that we have. That, that problem is a huge problem that does us in every time. Because if it's from Takradi or from Tema, we can check it. Okay. We can we can always check it, but if it's coming from the eastern corridor by road, mm. most of these things they come by by night. From with our experience with cables and and electrical products, mm. what we we realized was was that most of these things they don't even come in from Tema. Okay. Those that have come in from Tema, as we speak now, mm. there are five con containers we have in, impounded because they have substandard electrical products. Okay. They are they are there. They've been there since 2017 or or so. Okay. But the ones that come by road, they come. Some, sometimes late in the night, midnight, mm. they hit Accra by 3 a.m., 4 a.m., they've removed it, they've distributed. Wow. So unless we are willing to, you know, go and police those areas late in the night, mm. these things are done under the cover of darkness, and before you realize it is there, and it comes back again, enforcement is a problem. We are the GSA. We, we now have decided that, look, um, the president has been very clear on where he wants to take this country to. Okay. And sometimes the people around, you know, who, who also help form the government mm. may openly act as though they support the president's vision. But, you know, Go behind the scenes, they'll be doing him in. What we have said is, is that once we have our, our instructions clear, our law tells us what we should do. We will go ahead and then do it. And we have, we have been, been doing it for quite a while now. Let's talk about, finally, uh, public education, you know. Obviously, most of these guys in their thing that Charlie mount for chop, yeah. but they don't know what dangers they are getting themselves into. Does the health authority, for example, get down to them to educate them that look, you are ending your life yeah. slowly? Do we do that? So, Johnny, it's still ongoing. I remember we went to do a survey and health education around Jamestown, and we were telling them about this health uh, impact. Mm. One person said that since the time of Mansa Musa, that was somewhere in the 14th exactly. century, th that's what they have been doing, and they have been kept alive. So why are you telling them now that they should stop? Mm. Because if they have not died, uh, their grandparents didn't even die. You see, that lets you know that there is a gap of knowledge deficit. Mm. So as health promotion people, as people with, with public health uh, specialty, we don't just have to sit in our office. We have to reach down to them. Mm. Now, these people also have groups, okay? okay? And they have leaders. Mm. It is very important that we don't just tell them, hey, we have stopped. We have to reach out to them. Mm. Once their leaders talk to them, trust me, we'll be able to bring it down. Okay. We have to... Uh, engage them community engagement mm. on this mm. another thing that the government can do because unemployment is a public health issue what do we have to do what i am suggesting now that the government is talking about one district one factory mm. can we have a recycling plant around that area mm. okay now you are not sucking the people through community engagement you let them know that mm. let's say 80 percent of the employees are going to be these people but mm. because trust me they have knowledge in how to extract this thing. right once they are employed you have uh, uh putting food on their table mm. and that can cut it could, down. could you I give you the final word for 30 seconds yeah. uh so what promise can you make to us that's an illegality that's wrong the standards does not clear it to be there in the city center yeah. what promise can you make us as we wrap up well um johnny uh, the promise that i i would make would be limited to what our mandate as the gsa is mm. to the extent that we are permitted by law we are empowered by law to prevent some of these things from coming in because some of them they are garbage at the point of entry right you know somebody has used their television for for 10 years in europe well, what are you bringing it here here for so to that ex ex extent, we are willing and we are, we are going to do anything and everything within our power 
and with, within the remit of the law to ensure that we minimize the extent to which some of these hazardous things, these waste materials, these used appliances and all of that mm. enter into our, our borders. Thank you very much. And that's the labor of death. The conversation will continue in your homes and in your offices. Thanks to Park with Asari for making this possible. And to my guest, George Kojo Anti is the business development manager and also uh, at the Ghana Standards Authority. And Benson Ousu is a public health specialist. Uh,